In this session, we are going to discuss CPU scheduling algorithm based on priority scheduling discipline algorithm. So now in case of priority scheduling, along with the process name, process, process burst time, we might be having the arrival time, we will be having another data that is the priorities. Now what is the, what is the disadvantage with, the, with your SJF shortage job first? Because in the prior video, we have discussed SG, SGF. So, what are the disadvantages? The disadvantages will be like this. Let us suppose there is one process which is a very important process in the system, but its burst time is long enough. So, as a result of that, whenever that process is demanding the CPU, always SJF is denying to give the CPU to that process and allocating the CPU with those. Uh, cases where the CPU burst time is lesser. So, processes with the higher CPU burst time is getting denied for multiple number of times. And what will be the outcome? The outcome of this situation is starvation. And what is the solution? The solution is aging. Aging means each and every time when the process will get denied to get the access over the CPU by the system or the scheduling algorithms then the priority of the process will get increased. So, in this way for each and every time when it is getting denied and the priority is getting increased. So, after some time we may find that this is the process with, with the highest priority. So, what will happen? Then the scheduling algorithm will be bound to give this, give this CPU to the process for the execution and that is the origin of the priority scheduling. So, to explain more regarding this priority scheduling, let us go for a such numerical problem. So, here we are having three columns process, burst time and the priority. Processes are ranging from P1 to P5, burst times are 10, 1, 2, 1, 5 and priorities are 3, 1, 4, 5, 2. Here priority 1 will be the will be treated as the highest priority. And priority 5 in this case will be the lowest priority. So, now how can I do the scheduling and let me draw the NAT chart. So, process P2 is having the highest priority. So, P2 will get the chance at first and P2 is having the burst time of 1 unit. So, P2 will get completed here. Then which is having the priority 2? P5 is having the priority 2. So, next P5 will get executed with the burst time of 5. So, P5 will get terminated at 6, 5 plus 1 is equal to 6. So, now which is having the priority 3? P1. So, P1 will get executed and its burst time is 10. So, 6 plus 10, 16 will be the its completion time. Then which is having the priority 4? P3. P3 is having the priority 4. So, it will get terminated at 18 because it is having the burst time of 2. Then which is which will be coming next? Obviously, the only one process is remaining. So, that is a P4 will be coming and it is having the burst time of 1. So, at the 19th instant of time, all the processes will get their completion. So, 19. So, let me add this burst time 10 plus 3, 13 plus 6. So, 19. So, they are commensurating. So, let me go for the average waiting time calculation. So, I shall add and I shall divide by 5. I told you that always go for P1, P2, P3, P4, P5 in this sequence. So, P1, P1 is having the waiting time of 6. All the processes have arrived at the same time because I do not have any separate column for arrival time. So, P1 will be 6. For P2, it will be 0. For, for P3, it will be 16. For P4, it will be 18. For P5, it will be 1. So, let me go on adding. So, that is my 6 plus 16, 22 plus 18, that is a 40 plus 1. So, 41 by. So, 8.5 will be the answer. So, if such numerical problem comes in your GET exam or in your semester exams, please try to draw this net chart very carefully because that will decide 
whether your calculation is getting correct or wrong. So, I think you got the logic how to get, get it done. Okay. So, in the next video, we will be discussing other scheduling disciplines. Thanks for watching this video.